Hello, welcome back to this presentation of International Plumbing Code Chapter 4, Fixtures, Faucets, and Fixture Fittings. And let's jump right back into the code. We're going to go to section 405. Now remember, this is a great opportunity for you to follow along in your book. I will go section by section and try to help you understand what each of those means. So grab your highlighter and your book and let's get into 405. 405.1 talks about water supply protection and the point of all this is that you have potable water and that's something that you can drink, that's something safe to use and it's not going to get you sick or kill you, right? But it would be a really bad thing if the drains that these faucets or fixtures are connected to could somehow contaminate those fixtures, contaminate the potable water that you're using and then you would get sick and you would die. And so to avoid all of that Backflow protection is an integral part of every fixture. It is required. And what that means is that the fixture is designed so that backflow cannot happen. Drains cannot contaminate water lines. Now, let's have a look at this faucet right here. This is an example of a simple but extremely effective form of backflow prevention. We have here a faucet and there is an air gap. Now that gap is a physical distance from the spout of the faucet to the rim of the sink of the fixture. So if the drains were to back up, what's going to happen? Well, the sink's going to fill with awful water and it's going to overflow before it could ever get up into the faucet and by any chance contaminate the water. So this is again an example of where backflow prevention is built into many fixtures and where they are not, we are required to provide additional backflow prevention in the form of devices or the way that we pipe it. And we learn about that in chapter six of this code. All right, on to 405.2, access for cleaning. Plumbing fixtures shall be installed so as to afford easy access for cleaning both of the fixture and the area around the fixture. You can see in this illustration, a picture of a freestanding tub. Now in order to provide access for cleaning for the fixture and around the fixture, that tub had to be installed in a way that there's enough room you can see there's three or four inches all the way around just enough to where you know you might be able to sweep behind vacuum behind clean around the fixture and this is a code requirement we wouldn't want things set up in a way where it's just going to leave a mess that you cannot clean 405.3 talks about the setting of fixtures and says fixtures shall be set level in proper alignment with reference to adjacent walls so what we're looking at is when that toilet is set, here we have a picture of a toilet, right? It needs to be set in a way that it doesn't look crooked. That's what this is all about. So you're looking at the grout lines of the tile, the walls that are around it, and you say, okay, does this look straight or not? And that may involve measuring and checking distances to make sure it's right. But in the end, you should be able to step back and see, okay, this is set level and this is set straight. That is a proper setting of a fixture. Now this does bring up a discussion about uh, leveling of a toilet because let's say that you're in a basement and it's a concrete floor with tile on it or something and it's really not level. That toilet needs to be set solid to the floor. Now according to code you would want to set that level, put your level on the bowl and shim it if you have to, right? Get some shims under there so that it holds it level. Uh, personal opinion here. If it's extreme, say you have to shim it three quarters of an inch, that's a lot. And I'd kind of worry about that toilet coming loose or starting to move. So I might, you know, give a little bit. I want it to have a secure mounting to the floor, but have it as level as possible. You kind of see where I'm getting? Okay. 405.3.1 is probably one of the most important sections of this entire chapter and one that you definitely should memorize. And this gives us the details for the distances between fixtures. This is how you know where to put your pipes on the rough because you lay it out and you say, okay, I need to be a certain distance from wall, from fixtures in order to maintain minimum space requirements. So again, this one's critical for you to know. Let's go over it real quickly, starting with Fixtures need to be 15 inches away. That's from a sidewall to the center. You can see that with the lavatory. 30 inches center to center from other fixtures. And you can see that 
And you can see that 15 times 2 is 30, so we're giving 15 inches for one fixture, and then we give 15 inches for the next one. We're spacing them out, right? We have to have a front clearance of 21 inches. That's where you can approach the fixture, so you need that space out in front of the toilet. This also defines toilet compartments, a floor-mounted toilet compartment. The smallest that those can be would be 30 inches by 60 inches for a floor mount toilet and 30 inches by 56 inches for a wall mount toilet. Now the wall mount gives a little bit less room in the front because you can clean underneath the toilet and they're just again trying to provide enough access, enough space within those compartments to be able to properly clean and move around. So what should you memorize? You should definitely memorize that number 15. 15 inches away from a finished wall to the center of fixture and 30 inches center to center between fixtures, 21 inches out in front. This is going to give you that ability to figure up restrooms. Even on a plan that may not have everything spelled out, you can see, well, okay, here's the space and I know my minimums and I can lay out a restroom. 405.3.2 talks about public lavatories and gives the requirement that a lavatory is located in the same room as the water closet. That way, when you're done using the toilet, you can go and wash your hands without having to touch the door. 405.3.3 talks about the location of fixtures and piping and it states the fixtures shall not interfere with doors, windows, or means of egress. That means ways that you can get out of the room. Obviously, you would want to make sure that when you install a toilet, it's not going to block the door if you're trying to get in and out. Or same thing with the sink. If there's a vanity that goes in there, you can't put the vanity right behind the door so it won't open all the way. Those doors need to have a full ability to open so that you can come in and out of the space. I remember one time I was setting fixtures in a bathroom in a house and just moving through. I had all the fixtures in the room. I was ready to set the toilet and I went to set the bowl on the wax and the bolts and looked to my left and realized that the door into the bathroom was all the way open and against the wall and if I were to set that toilet that door would not close at all it would run right into the toilet. Luckily I caught that before I set the toilet but that's something you kind of have to be aware of. The door had plenty of space where it was at but when it had swung all the way open against the wall it came into the toilet compartment space so watch for that. On to 405.3.4, water closet compartments. This requires that each toilet have a separate compartment, especially in a restroom where there's multiple toilets in the same room. Those toilets have to be separated by walls or partitions that have a door. And this is to ensure privacy. Now there are a few exceptions. If there is a single occupant toilet with a lockable door, that means like there's only one toilet in there and there's only one door. Well, no partitions required. And daycare facilities may have one toilet that is not enclosed to help those littles who are potty training. 405.3.5 talks about urinal partitions and there are some very specific requirements for urinal partitions. And I know you're a plumber, you don't install urinal partitions generally. But as you're laying out fixtures, it is important to understand about partitions. Plus it's in the code, so let's know it. Partitions for urinals shall have a height not greater than 12 inches from the finished floor, not less than 60 inches above the floor, not less than 18 inches away from the surface of the wall, or not less than 6 inches beyond the lip of the urinal. Let's look at what this actually looks like. So one of those requirements coming away from the wall, at least 18 inches out, and 6 inches in front of the fixture. You can see that here. Now when it comes to the side partitions, maximum of 12 inches up from the floor. Once again, we see at the bottom of this, our spacing that we covered before, 15 inch minimum, that's just general fixture spacing requirements, and a 30 inch overall, same thing. And then there's a 60 inch minimum for height. So it has to come up at least 60 inches. It could be higher, but at least 60 inches to provide some privacy. 405.4, floor and wall drainage connections. There are two basic ways you can hook up a toilet, right? You can set it on a flange on the floor or you can hang it on a carrier on the wall. And this kind of tells us of those two options. In either case, corrosion resistant screws and bolts must be used because we don't want this to deteriorate. Here's an example of a floor flange 
and it is fastened to the subfloor using screws that are brass. Note brass is a corrosion resistant material and it is specified in 405.4.1. As we look at flanges, it details the thickness of those flanges. So brass 0.125, plastic 0.25 inches thick, uh, cast iron or galvanized 0.25, and then it specifies that the screws or bolts be of brass. That is detailed in the code. And secured to the structure like we saw in the picture. Let's talk briefly about securing wall hung. They have to be concealed inside the wall, so you'll have a chase, a space where these big cast iron units are built, and they have bolts that protrude through the wall as well as a barrel or a pipe that will connect to the toilet and convey the waste. So all of that has to be concealed inside the walls. There's Zern is one of the manufacturers of these. They have these big cast iron carriers with face plates. All the bolts are adjustable so you can get them right to the height that you need so that when it's time to set the fixture, you remember we talked about an ADA. If you haven't watched that, check that one out. There are certain elevations and by setting these bolts correctly, you can get your toilet elevation right where you need it for a regular height or an ADA height by setting this up inside the wall. Now there is also an option of having a single. The other ones we have looked at are doubles. When you're doing a single carrier inside of a wall, you have to have the extra support. You can see this with a bolt and an anchor on the back side. It's very critical. I want you to examine this for just a minute. This is a lever, right? Where is the person going to sit? In this, in this diagram we have a toilet. They're going to sit all the way out on the rim of the bowl. Now, how much does the toilet weigh? 70 pounds. You put some water in it. You add 10, 15 pounds. So we're almost at 100 pounds really by the time you get the whole fixture set on the wall. And then you're going to put a human on it. How much does a human weigh? Whoa, that's variable. But if you get a big human on there, I mean a couple hundred pounds, we're talking 300 pounds hanging out there in the room, in space. And it has to be able to support that. So that's why back inside the wall with these carriers, we have to have very secure anchors into the floor, into the concrete, making sure that it can support all of that weight is just hanging out there. 405.5 gives us a little bit of detail on fixtures with pumped waste. Sandiflow is an example of a company that makes this. You can see here is a Sandiflow toilet. The waste goes out the back of the toilet into a collection tank and is then grinded up and pumped to somewhere else. This is something you would install in a location where there's no way to get drains below the floor, but you can pump it to somewhere else. In these situations, it says that these fixtures shall comply with the ASME standards. There's a list in there. And they shall be installed according to the manufacturer's installation instructions. So make sure they're done right. Did you know that it is a code requirement to caulk fixtures? Yes, in 405.6, where it talks about watertight joints, there is a requirement that all fixtures be sealed between the walls and floors. So you can see here on a toilet, caulk around the base. On a urinal, caulk around the top around the wall. Same with a sink, you come around behind it. Or on a countertop. And this is to keep water from going where it shouldn't. Now, some people don't like caulk on their toilets. I've even had a homeowner that got upset with me because I caulked the toilet to the floor. But just recognize this is a code requirement. It not only seals, but it also helps to hold the fixture in place. So it serves two purposes when you caulk a fixture. 405.7, plumbing and mental health centers. It says the traps or pipes shall not be exposed and the fixtures shall be bolted through the walls. They just don't want anyone to be able to hurt themselves by disassembling parts of the fixtures. So there are unique fixtures for those situations. 405.8 goes over the design of overflows and states that the water level should not rise above the overflow when an overflow has been installed. It should be able to handle the water that's coming through at the rate that it's coming out of the fixture. 405.9, slip joint connections. We use these all the time to connect sinks. But there is a limit to how much you can do with these and here's the limit. You can have a slip joint connection on the outlet, that's the back by the wall, on the inlet, that's where it connects to the tailpiece, and within the trap seal, that's, that's the nut there within the trap. So that's kind of our limitation. Now with kitchen sinks, we expand that a little bit, 
and we may have disposal waste or continuous waste or even on a bathroom sink we may have an extension but beyond this beyond what's accessible within a cabinet we are not to install these slip joint fittings in walls and that's the second part here is it has to be accessible so they used to install these on tubs and all those tubs should have an access somewhere in the wall behind or in the ceiling below or wherever but anytime slip joint is used it has to be accessible uh, finally I'm just going to mention 405.10 talks about the design and installation of plumbing fixtures and emphasizes that it has to meet certain standards of quality all right so there is still so much to go over in chapter 4 from here on for the remainder of the chapter we go through one fixture or appliance at a time and we look at the plumbing code that applies to the installation of that or the standards that apply. So we'll be going through each of the different types of fixtures. We're going to pick that up in the next presentation and I will see you then.